about adding solar panels to your home. Although they can help save you money, what happens when it is time to sell your home? I'm Lauren, this is Raul, we are with the Schrader Group, and we're gonna break down the pros and cons of solar panels Absolutely. on the home. Let's do it. Let's dive in. Let's go. What would you say are some of the pros of solar panels? Well, I think, uh, number one, if you look at a solar panel, it's it's super techy, right? So if you're, if you're one of those people that like technology <laughs> and all those kind of things, I think it's really cool. You get apps that show how much energy you're saving in retrospect to your neighbors, and you're able to compare and contrast. Depending on the program, you can actually sell some of that wattage back to the uh, you know CPS or whoever it might be the energy provider, uh, but it just really depends. I mean, never knew that. Yeah, so it, it, I mean, some advantages are. I mean, they look some some of them look really really good on your roof, or or you know you're actually trying to help save the world, right? So I mean, there's a <laughs> lot of great things that go into play, uh, and, and there's a lot of advantages. It just really depends on what the exit strategy is. Sometimes. And they help save you money, right? They do help you in, in certain situations, right? Because your energy bill might disappear, but that's the still, main selling point of them, right? It, it is, and, and the longevity of you know how much is that payment going to cost me for ten years. 20 years or 30 years, mm -hmm. right? You kind of just got to add the two together and see where you're at. So how much are we talking on solar panels? Someone? Yeah, well, I mean, think about it this way. If you buy a $300,000 home and, you're, and it's a one story, you're not going to have a big footprint. So mm -hmm. you're probably looking about anywhere between 20 to 25,000 minimum going up on the roof. The larger your home is, the more consumption it needs. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to add more solar panels. With interest. With interest, right. So you're going to actually get a loan out, a secondary loan, probably a lien to your home. Uh, but it's anywhere I've seen when we resell house anywhere between cost of thirty all the way up to sixty five seventy thousand dollars. So it really just depends on what the outcome is. So would you say you should probably live in that home a certain amount of time if you're planning on getting solar panels? Well, it's an investment, right? right? So if you're going to invest in anything, you got to have a strategy as far as what you're going to do. So for example, you 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 tend to move every couple of years. Mm -hmm. I would not recommend it to you right. because you're going to be at the end of the day responsible for whatever that balance. Because might you be. own it or you rent the solar panels. Well, you're owning it, right? And, so and then when you move, do you take the solar panels with you? Well, that depends. You can. Now the problem is the cost associated with that is really really high. So sometimes it's just a lot easier to go ahead and pay it off and, and leave it to the new buyer. Because what ends up happening is, if, let's just say you put $30,000 on your roof, and then all of a sudden you decide to take it with you. What's going to take or cost ten grand to probably remove it? Then you're going to have to store it, and then you're going to have to reinstall it. So now you're looking at anywhere between twenty and twenty-five grand to redo that whole process again. Not to mention you're still paying on it. Mm -hmm. Not to mention you are still accruing interest on it. And then you're also... Uh, have to go back and fix the roof, all the holes that you put in the roof when you left. Right. So there's just a lot more that goes into it. A lot of warranties are voided at that point in time. So it's not really recommended that route. Uh, although I think that if you are purchasing it, you're doing it because you plan on being at a house for five, 10, 15 years. You're forever years. home. But yeah, I mean, but we, we hear, this is my last home and then two years later I get a phone call saying, hey, things have changed. Right. Now we got a new addition coming in or, or you know, just life circumstances have right. changed. So, it just really depends on where you're at in life, uh, but there are great advantages as well. Uh, just it just depends on your situation. Would you say it increases the resale value? Yeah, so that's been an ongoing debate here in our metro. Now, if we were in California, absolutely, because it's something that is normal over mm -hmm. there. Over here, it's not. I mean, people would still rather have a note on a swimming pool than a solar panel. Right. Uh, so, <laughs> point, point in time. Uh, but I think that the truth is, when we look at appraisals and we kind of get an idea of where they're at, number one, we have to jump through hoops to get all the wattage. How much is getting inputted, outputted, right? Because they're going to calculate all those values. But the appraiser, on average, is only going to give us anywhere between a 25 to a third of, of value for the roof, right? And what I mean by the roof is the panels. So let's just say we put 60K on your roof, you might only get 20K additional value for the panels. Oh. 30K on the roof, you're only gonna get 10. And I got probably 100 uh, appraisals that have solars built into it. And if I ask how much they paid for it versus how much they actually got credit for it, it's gonna be minor in, in wow. perspective. So why own solar panels? Yeah, so solar panels are that thing, right? It's a modern kind of approach. It's it's how we are able to, you know, reduce our carbon copy of the earth. Uh, but it really just breaks down on what you would do. Like for me, I Because it see, just doesn't seem like it would make sense, I feel like. For it, it depends, right? Because it depends on your, your exit strategy. If you're going to be within five to ten years, I wouldn't recommend it because what ends up happening is that you purchase this panels. It goes on your house, right? The, the lender is going to put a lien to your house. So mm -hmm. a lot of times the buyers 
especially in our market, think that some other buyer is going to come in and assume your decision or your debt on the roof. And a lot of times that doesn't happen that way because the buyer is going to walk in and say, yeah, that's great. I love the fact that I'm going to get a reduction in my bills, but I didn't make that decision. I don't want to pay your $25,000 or assume your note because I'm already buying this house and I want to pay this much money for the house. And if the solar panels are there, great. If they're not, great. But I don't want to pay for a decision. Then you got to really break down the math. And well, that, right. I was going to say, so what What it would be like the difference of like a 3,000, 2,000, 2,500 square foot home, you know, with solar panels versus not Yeah, so panels. like, let, let's just use my house, for, for example. It's about four years old, uh, energy efficient, you know, spray foam insulation, low E3 windows, all that good stuff. So in the summer, I'm probably looking at top on a 3,500 square foot home, about 350. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, in the winter, I'm probably at about $100. So you average the two out, I'm probably going closer to about $200, $225 a year for mm -hmm. a roll value. Now, if I was to get solar panels, I might have an additional two to $300 a month. So even though I'm saving money because now my electricity went down, I still have that two or $300 obligation plus the balance. So imagine buying a car, mm -hmm. right? And every payment you make is mainly interest, going to interest, going to interest. Well, that car is still either going to be there or you got to sell it you got to right. pay that note off well if i go to sell my house and say my house is worth x i got to incur that negative debt as well because that's tied to the house right so some people think that someone will just come in and take over and, and it's happened it has happened but not very often hmm. uh and, and the ones that do have that happen is when the bill is actually zero or negative and they're actually right. getting money back but it resets every month. So it's not like right. you have a bank that you could kind of storage unless you have a generator or something like that or a battery backup, which then again gets your bill even more. So I would say in my recommendation that if it makes sense on paper and put it on mm -hmm. paper to make it an example, but know that the fact that you're probably going to have to consume that debt at the end of the day if you plan on selling before you paid off those panels. At the end of the day, it's a household decision, but can you touch on a couple more of the pros? Yeah, so I think right now where we're at, if I look at 10 years ago, solar panels versus five years ago versus today, technology is just kind of snowballed, yeah. right? So things are getting a lot better. They're more efficient. They're coming down a little bit in price, mm -hmm. depending on how much wattage you're trying to pull off. We had the storm a couple years ago, and everyone jumped to the generators and back right. batteries. That's a big cost associated with these panels, and it's like an add-on, which is great for a bad snowy day. Mm -hmm. But we don't really see blackouts as much as some other metros in, in right. the United States. So I don't know if that would be the, the give and take uh, of that situation. But I think that what will end up happening is solar panels will get a little bit more affordable. We've had a lot of tax incentives that have helped uh, home buyers utilize it. Now, as long as you utilize it to your benefit, that's great. Mm -hmm. If you don't, well, then that's another story. But I think that as we kind of evolve, and let's just say the solar panels are 100% paid off. Well, now you're the beneficiary of right. no bills, yeah. which is really great. Your returns right. are gone. It helps your uh, you know, financial situation. So if you know you're going to be in a place for a long term, I think it's a great idea. If you're looking to buy a house, I think it's a great idea to take advantage of somebody that already has them because at least you're getting that benefit, right? Uh, so it just really depends on the household and what, what your outcome is and what you're trying to accomplish but as we get through the process, things are only getting better, just like the Teslas, just like all the EV-ready vehicles. Mm -hmm. They're getting better. They're way better than they were seven, eight years ago, just like everything else. Technology kind of takes advantage. Right. And two, if, you know, especially if you're living in Texas, we've got two seasons hot and hotter. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. It kind of it makes sense on bringing, you know, helping bring that, that bill so, down. So I'm glad you put that out there because if we're looking at a 1995 house or a 1950 house, your electricity bill could be six, $800 in the summertime. Oof, yeah. That situation, it makes sense to yes. go ahead and put panels on there because now your bill comes down. Maybe you're only paying a couple hundred bucks or whatever it might be, mm -hmm. but at least you're saving $600 a month. You multiply that by 12, that's $7,200 a year. Now in five years, you get your investment back. That now the math math. Now the math makes sense. <laughs> but if it's a, one of those short term and you're getting a brand new house, it should be energy efficient. It doesn't make a whole bunch of sense to jump in there yeah. unless you plan on being there for a very, very long time. Yeah, just do your homework. Absolutely. Just do your homework. <laughs> Let's pretend I have solar panels on my home and I'm ready to sell. What are some hurdles that I might face? Yeah, so I think the biggest thing is is the expectation that nobody's going to willingly want to take or assume your, your solar panel liability. 
And what, what I mean by that is nobody wants to come in and say, okay, I want to buy your house for three fifty, dollars and then take on another $25,000 worth of debt. It's mm -hmm. just, I need to run a credit here, plus I need to run credit here. That's already a, a, a done deal to most people. And I know that a lot of times, and we, we sell four to 500 homes a year, so I see this pretty frequently. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people are like, well, they can assume the note. That is true. But who wants to really assume that note? They would want it to be kind of built into price or whatnot. Yeah. So there's a lot of people that are very strong on the fact that, hey, their solar panels is saving this much money a year. But it, that's great if I'm the beneficiary of it. I don't want to be the person that's continuing that payment because then I'm kind of in the same boat as a seller. So with that being said, I think it's a great way to kind of prepare yourself that there is a situation that you're probably going to have to assume. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that you're going to have to pay off your, your bill. And, and unless you have something really, really go going on for you, like a swimming pool, a view of the city, water features, something that's really that opportunity cost that someone's going to look past and say, well, and it has solar, which is a benefit in, in a lot of people's eyes. But if there's a debt associated with it, I think that the seller should be prepared in its buyer's market to have to assume that note and budget that as a worst case in situation. Yeah, definitely. Hopefully we gave you something to think about before financing solar panels. Please reach out if you have any questions at all. We love to help. Once again, I'm Lauren. This is Raul. It's been a pleasure. Every household is different. So let us know if you have any questions. We're here to help you and serve you. Thank you so very much and have a blessed day.